Hi everyone, this is the fourth video uh, for your GCSE Buddhism revision and appropriately it is on the four noble truths. So our learning outcomes for this video are to be able to describe the four noble truths, to explain the importance of the four noble truths to Buddhists and assess the relevance of the four noble truths today. The key words for this video are dukkha, which means suffering. Magga, which is the path leading to the cessation of suffering, that means the end of suffering. And Tana, which means craving or selfish desire. It's really important that we pay attention to that word selfish. Um, sometimes when you see this word translated as desire, it makes people think, ah, but desire isn't always bad because you can desire to help people. But from the Buddhist point of view, desiring to help people is compassion. It's not tanha, it's karuna, and desiring somebody to be happy is metta, loving kindness. So tanha is selfish desire. Um, let's have a little look at a uh, an exam question from 2011. The Four Noble Truths are the basis of Buddhism. Do you agree? Why might somebody disagree with you? So we need three reasons on both sides of this. Uh, to get full marks. So on a scale of 1 to 10, ask yourself how confident would you be about answering this question. It's really important with this topic because it is certain that the Four Noble Truths is going to come up in some way. So this is a re one of the most important videos for you to watch. Here's another exam question from 2010. The Four Noble Truths have no relevance today. Do you agree? Give reasons for your opinion, give reasons why someone might disagree with you. Again, ask yourself, how confident would you feel about being able to answer fully and get six out of six for this question? Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to be confident about both of these exam questions. So, according to the traditional life story of the Buddha, um, well, he wasn't born the Buddha, he was born Prince Siddhartha, and he had everything anybody could want. He had a beautiful wife, he had an amazing palace, and he had uh, servants who sort of tended to his every need, but he also had a completely unrealistic view of life. He'd essentially been spoiled all his life. And then his uh, bubble was burst by four sights. Those four sights are an old man, a sick man, a dead man, and a holy man. Now before I go on, I just want to emphasize this, the four sights, they are different from the Four Noble Truths. The four sights are the things that Prince Siddhartha saw. These four things. The Four Noble Truths is what the Buddha taught. Okay, it's really crucial that you keep that in mind. Lots of you made a mistake uh, with that in your mock exam. So remember, the four sights is what Buddha saw. The Four Noble Truths is what the Buddha taught. So. Um, why did these things have such an effect on him? Well, he hadn't quite realised, because he'd always been surrounded by young and beautiful people, that actually everybody one day gets old, unless you die before you get old. Um, the sick man, why did that cause him such distress? Well, he'd always enjoyed good health, um, but he realised when he saw the sick man that actually, just by being alive, he was vulnerable to getting all manner of um, you know, difficult diseases. And then the most shocking sight of all was seeing a dead man, and he realised that he, his uh, loved ones, everybody that he cared about would one day die, and that pained him very deeply. And then he saw a holy man, and he uh, that inspired him to go out and search for a cause, uh, uh, a cure to suffering. Uh, went out and searched for enlightenment. So he left his palace behind and set out on this. It took him six years. A spiritual journey over six years. He tried all sorts of different methods for attaining enlightenment. And then finally, um, after many, many struggles, he eventually reached his goal, Nibbana Enlightenment, and thereby became the Buddha. So Prince Siddhartha became the Buddha at the moment of his enlightenment, because Buddha means the awakened or enlightened one. Now this happened here in a place called Bodh Gaya in India. For about two and a half thousand years, it's been the most important pilgrimage site in the Buddhist world, so he's supposed to have meditated underneath this tree. If we look a little uh, at a at a map of where Bodh Gaya is, uh, this is the Ganges Delta here. Um, that's the area of India that we're looking at. Um, so Bodh Gaya is where he became enlightened, and then he travelled to Sarnath to give his first 
teaching the Four Noble Truths. This is a monument in a deer park uh, which celebrates the, the first teaching uh, of the Buddha. So I'm not going to read through all of this. If you want to read through the whole of the Four Noble Truths, it is available on S Drive. What I want you to focus on is this summary of the Four Noble Truths down here. So essentially what the Buddha is saying is this. Life is full of suffering. Suffering has a cause that causes craving or selfish desire. The end of suffering is possible. And the Eightfold Path is the way to the end of suffering. So this is based essentially on a medical model. Um, if you are sick, first of all a doctor needs to diagnose what the illness is. So the Buddha took this starting point and applied it to human life. Well what is it that we really want in life? We want to be happy, therefore the sickness that we suffer from is suffering, unhappiness, dukkha. Um, then what a doctor would try and do is say, oh well let's find out what the cause is. And you go to a doctor because you want to be well. And what we ultimately want in life is, is full and complete happiness. And the Buddha said that that is possible, but in order to achieve it, you have to live your life in a particular way, which is the medicine. The, the Eightfold Path is the medicine to cure suffering. So hopefully you'll be able to describe the Four Noble Truths. If you need to recap it, just play the video again. But we're going to move on now. So the second learning outcome here is to explain the importance of the Four Noble Truths to Buddhists. Now, it could be that in an exam you were just asked uh, that question, explain the importance of the Four Noble Truths to Buddhists. Now, if you were, here are four points which you could make to answer that question. So it was the first teaching the Buddha gave after Nibbana. That's one reason why it's important. It sets out the problem, suffering, its cause, its end, and the way to its end. The Buddha himself described the Four Noble Truths as the basis for all its other teachings, and every Buddhist tradition accepts them. However, um, the question that we looked at at the start required us to see another side of it. So it is those are reasons for thinking that uh, the Four Noble Truths is the basis of Buddhism as well as why they're important. Uh, on the other hand, you could say, well, the Buddha's example that he set in his life is the basis of Buddhism. You could say that taking refuge, which is the ceremony that you go through when you become a Buddhist, is the basis of Buddhism. Or you could say that meditation, because it's a central spiritual practice in Buddhism, is, is what it's actually all about. So if we look at this question here now, the Four Noble Truths are the basis of Buddhism. Uh, do you agree? Why might somebody disagree with you? Hopefully now you'll feel confident about answering that question. Uh, but quickly, here is um, a model answer. So, uh, the Four Noble Truths are the basis of Buddhism. I agree with this statement because they are the fundamental teaching from which all other Buddhist teachings have developed. Also, they are the central belief of all Buddhist traditions. In addition, they were the first teaching of the Buddha. That's three brief reasons, three out of three. Some people might disagree with me because they might say, uh, because when someone becomes a Buddhist, they take refuge. This, therefore, could be seen as the basis of Buddhism. Also, the main spiritual practice in Buddhism is meditation. This also, therefore, could be seen as the basis of Buddhism. In addition, some Buddhist traditions see great importance in the student-teacher relationship, particularly Vajrayana Buddhism and Zen. Uh, this relationship, therefore, could be seen as the basis of Buddhism. That's three brief reasons, three out of three. At that point, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to pause this. And you're going to watch this video, uh, you're going to watch an, a second video in a minute.